All right, Game Night Studio is back here with another How to Paint Minis tutorial. Today, I'm going over how to paint Rebel Troopers from the Star Wars uh, Imperial Legion game set. I recently started playing that with a buddy of mine. It is a lot of fun. I'm having some good times with it, so I figured I already have a Stormtrooper video up. Let's do a How to Paint a Rebel Trooper video. Hope you guys like it. Uh, the end result looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. If you want to say something else, let me know. I'll put it up. Yeah, let me know what you like, what you don't like, what else you want to see, and I'll get to it. Yeah, Game Night Studios. Thank you for watching. Here we are. We have an unpainted Star Wars Legion Rebel Trooper. We're going to start off by basing him in green. Any sort of green spray paint is going to be a good base for this guy. You can buy the spray paint specifically for miniatures, but you don't have to. I got this one right here. It's a camouflage dark green from Rust-Oleum. What we're going to do is we're going to base him in that and then we're going to use an airbrush or a paintbrush to put another layer of green on him and shade it up from there. But hitting him with that initial spray paint is going to speed this up tremendously. You get your airbrush, you get your water and your thinner in there. We're going to use some olive drab from Reaper. Put that in the pot. This is going to be our base coat for the mini. The spray paint that you put on him is going to be that base for the mini. That's going to make all the other paint stick better. That's why we don't just start with the olive drab. And the closer the color is to the olive drab, the better off you're going to be. Try to find something that doesn't have any kind of gloss to it. Sometimes it's called glossy, sometimes it's called satin. The closer you can get to the matte or the flat colors is what you're going to want for this kind of project. And it just saves a ton of time. Because if you were just to base them in black or something and then try to do this with the airbrush, it would take four to five coats probably to get that green built up. We're also going to do our highlights. So you add some tanned skin directly to that green in the airbrush. We're going to get all the highlights done on this mini before we really get into the to adding more colors to them. We're not going to highlight it completely though. We're going to save that for the final step right before the wash. but. You put that tan skin and that olive drab in your airbrush and you hit the raised edges of the mini, like the back of the foot there because that's kind of exposed, the top of the knee, and the shoulders. Then put some more tan skin in and then hit it again in those same spots, lighter than you did before, and that's going to be a highlight to that green. This is going to be kind of a, a passive highlight. Just try to hit any of the areas that would be hit by the light normally. So shoulders, tops of the knees, back of that one foot. Throw some weathered wood in there from Secret Weapon Miniatures. Secret Weapon Miniatures and Reaper are by far my favorite paints to use. I do also use Army Painter a lot, but I specifically like Army Painter's washes and their shades. They're mixing medium a lot. Uh, Reaper and Secret Weapon are by far my preferred paints. I do use some other ones occasionally, but those are definitely my primary colors. But with the weathered wood mixed in with that tan skin and that olive drab, we're just going to hit the very, very tops, the shoulders, the knees, the back of that foot with just a light coat. And that's going to scale up that highlight. Hit over to the brown rust, again from Secret Weapon Miniatures. This is going to be the secondary color to the mini. Green's obviously the first. We did that with the airbrush, now we got to cut this in, this brown rust, with the paintbrush. Hitting the backpack, you want to hit the straps, the backpack itself, the boots, the gloves, all of them are going to be brown. I'm also going to do the rim of the hat with this as well, but I believe I do that in a, a later step. So we're going to be shading this later. You notice we're not washing anything yet. I started doing that later. I started switching up how I did things. Uh, instead of completely finishing one of the colors with the highlights, the washes, and everything, and then moving on to the next one, I started doing it this way, where I hit all the base colors on a mini first, and then I move on to highlighting and stuff, because it's a lot easier to fix. Like, say you get some of this brown on that green, all you gotta do is go back to that olive drab tan skin to touch that up, and it's not that difficult. Meanwhile, if you were to wash this character and then get some brown somewhere you don't want it, you have to go back and then try to 
match all those paints again and then wash it and hope it's all the same consistency so it's not blotchy and doesn't stand out. So we're going to be hitting every single color of this mini before we sh really shade anything. We shaded the green just because it was the biggest one so that's what we did with the airbrush. That's going to be the focal point of the mini. Hit that linen white again from Reaper and with that we're going to paint the sleeves. Uh, this is a good way to differentiate units in this game. I did a commission for this where I painted three units of Rebel Troopers and had white shirts, orange, and red. And that was how I told, or I could tell the units apart. But I really like how white works on these guys, especially when you use the wash, because we're going to be washing the green and the brown with the same color of brown wash. So you can throw that right on this white shirt and it's going to end up shading it really nicely. Cody. The plan actually is to get the colors down on everything, highlight, and then we're going to hit the entire mini with that the brown wash that I'll show you near the end of this. But we're not going to hit the face with it because flesh tones, you kind of do a different style with it. But since all of these are kind of in that same spectrum, you can use the same wash on all of them. So linen white is kind of an off-white. I think it's a little, just a smidge of yellow in it. It looks more like a, an older fabric. We're going to the rust brown again from a Reaper Miniatures. And we're going to hit the bandolier that this guy has. Going from one shoulder uh, all the way to the other shoulder. This is, it's a really cool color. It's called rust brown, but it's definitely more of an orange. And to me, it's like the perfect rebel color that nice bright rebel orange. I don't know why I like it so much, but I really do. I try to stick it in every rebel minis paint scheme somewhere. Uh, back to the tan skin. Now we're going to hit that face. Let's get, and this is really the same if you have any kind of flesh tone anywhere on any mini. I do pretty much the same technique. Get the flesh tone from, or the tan skin, sorry, from Reaper Mini and paint all the flesh with that. That's going to be the base of the flesh. We're not going to highlight it yet because when we do the eyes, it tends to be a little bit messy. It gets outside the lines. And that's when you fix that. So go to scale 75. This is dark metal. We're going to be painting the gun with this. So this is a method I started using pretty recently. It's just a really simple and easy way to paint guns. Start with the scale 75, dark metal, paint the whole gun with that. Eventually at the end we're going to add some highlights to it. And it's just a really cool color. It's a dark metal but it's not completely black. Uh, it doesn't have like much of a blue tint to it. It's just a neat color for a gun. And there's not a crazy amount of detail on these guns in the first place so there's not a whole lot we could highlight with a paint that isn't metallic. So it's there's no point in putting the extra effort into that when we can get a nice looking gun with just some good metallic work. And Scale 75 really does make a good metallic paint. It goes on with just the right amount of consistency. So, back to our brown rust from Secret Weapon. I forgot to paint the hat when I did it the first time, so I'm going to paint the brim of the hat now. You could have done this again when you did the, the gloves and the boots and the backpack. That probably would have been a better time to do it, but I'm doing it now, because that's how I roll. So, details on this guy are going to be fine, but not too terrible. And, if you noticed, we haven't really shaded anything yet. We shaded that green with the airbrush, but we haven't shaded the brown, we haven't shaded the white, we haven't shaded the face, we haven't shaded the gun. I said it before, I'll say it again. I want to get all the base colors where I want them before I start shading. Handlewood from Secret Weapon. We're going to paint these little leg sleeves. Just, yep, just that single color on there should do it. Because they're, they're not a giant detail, but having them look different from the pants and the boots are going to add a nice little element to the mini. So I've gotten into this game pretty recently and I'm having a whole lot of fun with it. I was kind of skeptical at first because I misheard one of the rules before I ever started playing. And then once I heard more and more about it, 
the more interested I was in it. So, all the shading on this guy, we're going to do pretty much at the same time, right before we apply the wash at the very end. But I want to get all the colors right where they're supposed to be, because fixing any mistakes at this point is going to be way easier than after you have the wash on there. So once we're done with these leg sleeves, uh, then we're going to work on the face a little bit. Grab some of that aged bone. we got to fix that hat first. I like getting a lighter tone on the hat as opposed to the brim. So that's going to make it stand out a little bit. Aged bone on there is going to look pretty nice. Uh, this is a lighter tone and since the hat already has some ridges on it it's gonna take the wash really well. The wash is gonna go in all those little divots on the top and it's just gonna show off a lot better. So we don't need to do a whole lot of highlighting on this step at all. Of course, a visit from the always helpful helper cat. I didn't even mean to, but that cat is becoming a theme in all my videos because every single time I sit down to paint, it has to then hop up and get in the way. Is it like being on camera, I guess? Perfect. So we got the hat. We got him. It's time to start adding the finer details. Grab that linen white from Secret Weapon, or not Secret Weapon, Reaper. Grab that linen white from Reaper, and we're going to paint those eyes. A lot of people have a lot of trouble with eyes. As I've seen just scrolling through people's pictures on Instagram. White in the eyes and the pupils in the eyes are real simple. We haven't shaded anything on the face yet, and here's why. Because it's, it's way easier to just put a decent sized glob of white over the eye socket and then a big black line going through the center of the eye than it is to try to make perfect uh, whites of the eyes and pupils which is the tiniest tip of your paintbrush every single time you do it it's way easier to just fix the mistakes afterwards you just grab the tan skin again and touch it up and it's done so while those eyes are drying we're gonna go into that beard I grabbed some sea gray from model color. This is good paint, it works well, but it comes out a bit thicker, so you always gotta stir it up with a little bit of water. I like dipping the paintbrush in the water, shake it off a little bit, and then just stir it with that. I don't add full drops of water anymore, it became really uh, inconsistent. So I started doing it that way, and I've never looked back. So this guy, I, I always viewed him as like an older guy, he's got a big beard, we just paint it gray. Grab the pure black, and now we're going to go in with those eyes. We let the eyes dry while we mess with the beard. Just keeping busy, staying moving. So you grab the pure black and just make a big line going from just the center of the eye completely. It doesn't matter if you get outside the lines a little bit. It's super easy to fix because we haven't shaded that skin yet. So you just do a big line. Boom. If it gets on his cheekbone, it doesn't matter. It's way easier to fix than you'd think. Meanwhile, people spend just hours trying to get pinpoint perfect eyes. And you can just, there you go. You see they're a little bit big. They're kind of hard to tell from this, from this camera. But he's definitely got some pupils on his cheekbones. But we go back to that tanned skin and just hit the cheekbones. And then, bam, your eyes are perfect. It took very little time, very little effort, and you got good eyes. Then... Now we got the eyes done, now we're free to highlight that face. We grabbed that uh, tanned skin highlight from uh, Reaper paint as well. We hit the bridge of the nose, the cheekbones, and that's pretty much all we can hit on this guy because he's got a beard and a hat. Otherwise, uh, we might hit some of the chin, we might hit the forehead. Grab that weathered wood, we're going to shade that beard. We got all of our base colors on, so now we're free to start adding some dimension to this mini. So he's got the light gray, we go to this weathered wood which is almost a white, but definitely still has some gray notes in it. 
and we use a feathering technique on anything with hair. Something I like to do. It's where you get paint on the brush but not a ton of it and you just make little streaks and that's how you shade it and kind of feather it in there. That's the technique. That's, that's what it's called. Do that in the mustache, the beard. We're just going to let it sit there for now. Go back to that olive drab. Now's the perfect time to fix up any of those little mistakes you made. Because like I said, we're done with the base colors on everything. All we got to do is the highlight. So now we want to make sure that base green is exactly where it should be. If you have any tiny little mistakes, olive drab, uh, if it's anywhere where there's a highlight, add that tan, that tan skin. We're going to highlight that gun with some gun metal. Uh, this is from uh, Army Painter. They make some great metallic paints. Gun metal, we're just going to hit the highlights of this black metal that we had on there before from scale 75. Anything that would stick out on the gun, the chamber, the little ejector part on the side, hit that with that gun metal. Then we hit that shining silver and that is going to be the almost the extreme highlight of the gun because it's a very very bright metal. So we just hit the very very edges of where we just hit with the gun metal and that's going to add a lot of dimension to this gun. Also, don't forget he's got a nice little belt buckle on the front of him. You just shade that exactly the same way you shaded the gun. I think those are the only two metal bits he's got on him. But that adds a nice gradient, really, from the dark metal to the bright shiny metal. Grab that engine rust from Secret Weapon. This is going to be the highlight to that bandolier. That bandolier just needs this as the highlight because we're going to hit it with a wash later. We're going to hit pretty much the entire mini with a wash and that's going to pull all this together, lock it in and make everything match in a way. It's going to add those deep colors to the folds of the fabric and the bandolier and just everywhere it's going to hit with that. So if you decided to put an orange on the hat, this is what the, this is the color you'd highlight it with as well. I never like putting orange on the hat because I figure realistically these guys are out on a battlefield. Do you want a big orange target on your head? I wouldn't. Pop out the Mississippi mud. This is just a super basic kind of paint you can get from Hobby Lobby. If you get any color that's similar to this, it's going to work just the same. I like this color just because it's super cheap. It's actually one of the first colors I started out with. And I've upgraded to real mini paint since then. It's a little thick, so I'd water it down a little bit. Same technique, get the brush wet, stir it up, and then we're going to highlight all the brown with this. Start with an edge highlight, and then either feather or dry brush the rest of the brown into that edge highlight. So these colors are kind of a decent extreme from one another, but for whatever reason, I've never been able to make something this simple work with any other color but brown before with most colors you'd want to kind of marry them in together like we did with that green you mix the tan skin into the green and you just gradually highlight it from there with browns if you start with a dark brown and then this Mississippi mud color or any color you would have to be similar you don't need to do that because the wash actually pulls it all together I would imagine just because the colors have such a similar base but this is what we're highlighting all the brown on the entire model with we're hitting the backpack straps we're hitting the backpack the hat we're hitting the boots the belt the gloves everything hit the edges get that nice edge highlight on it and then marry it all together with kind of a dry brush kind of a feathering this is it's such a simple technique that you don't need to be super accurate with it and that's kind of why it's my favorite. You can just go wild with it. As long as you don't repaint the whole thing, then it's going to have that shaded leathery look to it, which is exactly what I was going for. So again, keep in mind where the light would be hitting the model and put more of this brown on those spots. Like it would be, if light was coming down from the top, it hit the top of the backpack and the back of the backpack it's such a big flat area there's nothing blocking the light that's where the focal point of the highlight would be he's got a little belt under his backpack that would probably get no light at all because the backpacks overhanging it so 
I would put either no highlight on, highlight on that or very, very little. Same technique with the boots, just dry brush it on there where it's supposed to go, put a little bit extra on the toes. The hand, hand, I like going a little bit more detailed with it. Be sure to hit like each knuckle individually and highlight the tops of the fingers. That's gonna really make them pop out. That's, that's, it's gonna look slick if you do that. A lot of people neglect the hands, but that's really a good opportunity to show off a lot of your detail skills because of each individual finger and the space in between them. So right there you can see I hit the top of the fingers and then the knuckles of each finger. And it just it makes it pop, it makes it stand out, it adds that tiny detail that we're looking for when we paint tiny miniatures. Notice how we don't just paint the entire glove with this with this highlight color, it's only specific areas. Like the top of that thumb, I didn't go in right up next to the gun. And it's very difficult to mess up the green with this. So now we're going to highlight that green. This is the part that's going to really bring it out. Olive drab, tan skin, and secret weapon weathered wood. We're going to mix all three of these together and do the edge highlights to the green. I save this step for near the end just so if we did mess up along the way we get some brown outside the lines we get some of the skin on somewhere we don't want it then it's easier to fix. So one drop of the tan skin, one drop of the olive drab and two drops of the weathered wood is what we're going to use to highlight this. So water it down a little bit with that damp brush and then we're going to hit the edges of all those folded lines in the fabric. On the kneecaps, we're going to hit the pockets. Uh, specifically on the back of the legs and the shoulders is where you definitely want to hit this because that's where the light's going to be hidden. There, on the back of the leg that's facing up towards the light. On the other one, you want to go a little bit lighter with it because it wouldn't make sense for the light to be hidden there. He's got a hood on his back. Don't forget to hit that hood as well because that's going to be exposed to the light. So that should definitely get an edge highlight. We're going to go to pure weathered wood, water it down a little bit, and we're going to highlight those little leg sleeves he's got connecting his pants to his boots. We don't need to marry in the two colors of the handle wood and the weathered wood and gradually lighten these highlights because it's going to be pushed together and it's going to marry very well with the wash. When we hit the whole wash over this, it's going to bleed these two colors together almost and just bridge the gap and there's not going to be a giant difference. As well as we're hitting just the edges with this. We're not dry brushing it. We're not trying to blend it with the handle wood. Having it hit just the edges is going to make it work a lot better with that wash. It's not going to look like a sloppy like a sloppy shade. It's going to be right where we need it, right where we put it, right on those tips of these leg sleeves. Okay, so we got all the highlights on him done. We got the edge highlights on the pants, the gloves, the backpack, the bandolier, the hat, everything. Now we're going to put a little more detail on that face. We already highlighted the nose and the cheeks with that tan skin highlight. Now we're going to wash the face. Game color flesh wash. That is what we're going to put on this face. That is what's going to bring this thing together. That's what's going to add that shading to the to the face. The flesh wash, it really shades faces and skins very well. It's a perfect hue that would naturally occur in skin and it just shades that brings it where we want it to be. We're going to grab that dark tone and we're going to shade that beard. So we started off with that lighter gray and then we shaded it with that weathered wood. This dark tone is going to add those undertones because you notice when someone has a salt and pepper beard it's not fully black, it's not fully white, there's just little hints of everything kind of sprinkled in there. And that's exactly what this does. Since we have that lighter weathered wood feathered technique on the tip of the beard, 
this is going to put a darker element to everything on it, make it look a bit more realistic, less exaggerated, and right up next to the skin is going to be dark how we want it. Now, here's where the magic happens. We got mild brown, strong tone, and quick shade mixing medium, all from Army Painter. This is what we're going to cover the entire mini with, excluding that face area because we already have that how we have it set. Mild brown we're going to use two drops of, one drop of strong tone, and then three drops of mixing medium, quick shade mixing medium. This was a very hard lesson for me to learn. I did not use to water down my washes. Uh, I know a lot of other people didn't, and it causes the mini to look dirty. You put all this time and effort into shading the mini and getting it exactly how you want it, and then if you put too strong of a wash on it, it just knocks out all those highlights, takes away all that hard work, and it just makes it look muddy and dirty. Now this guy, he's been in the battlefield, we want him to look a little bit muddy and dirty, but we don't want to just waste all the time and effort we put on those highlights. So the quick shade mixing medium waters it down, and at the same time, it leaves it a little thick. And I know that sounds a little odd having a thicker wash, but that thick wash stays where you want it to go. It stays in like the recesses of the pants and the shoulders, all the crevices that you want to be darker, it stays there because it's thicker. If you were to mix this with just water or some airbrush thinner or something like that, it's gonna be a lot more watery, it's gonna get all over the place. The quick shade mixing medium tends to make it stay right where you put it. And we're gonna hit every single bit of this guy other than the face. We're gonna hit the hat, the green, the arms, legs, boots, gun, literally everything we're going to hit with this wash. And this is going to tie all of those colors together. It's going to make that shirt look just dirty enough to be believable. It's going to make those two brown tones we used for shading mix together and become a lot more cohesive. It's going to hit that gun and bring that to a more realistic kind of dingier looking metal and it's all gonna play off those highlights that we already added. Now, if we were to shade each one of these colors and wash them individually as we were doing them, then it would be a lot harder to fix any mistakes we have. We'd have to make sure the wash was exactly the same every single time. Otherwise, it would all stand out weird and not be as cohesive. It wouldn't blend as well. It would be spotty. This is the step that saves us a ton of time. We spent a little bit extra time going in and shading each color individually so that we could save time on this step when we just hit pretty much the entire model with the exact same color of wash because we already have those highlights set in on every single color. And once we have this highlight or this wash done, uh, that's it, this guy's done. We still need to paint the base, we still need to put some protective sealing coat on him, but he's finished at that point, so we don't have to worry about going in with another color and messing up all the hard work we've done. Also, it's important to note when you're using mixing medium that it's got kind of a whitish translucent tone, so the washes you put on aren't going to look as powerful as when they dry. When they dry, that whitish translucent tone completely goes away and you're just left with the wash. So don't go overboard with the wash. If you already have it on there and you think, oh, that doesn't look dark enough, wait for it to dry before you add any more. We put a lot of effort into this and I hate to wipe out those highlights just because we got a little impatient with the wash. Now, this is the most important step of the painting process because this ties in every color we've done so far. So take your time, go through. If you see it pooling too much of an air in an area, uh, take that dry brush that you have and just suck some of that wash out of there and just wipe it off on the page. Go back and make sure there's just enough everywhere. This does take a little bit of practice to you get the feel of it. Also, if you get any kind of little hairs on the mini, now is the time to pull them off. That becomes real disruptive if the wash dries 
and there's a cat hair or something on the mini, then you pull it off and you got that line going right through all this beautiful detail work you just spent all this time and effort in. So this is the step where you kind of pause and you take a good look around the mini, make sure everything is exactly how you want it before you set it off to the side to dry or put it in front of your floor fan. Now is the time to do that because you can't go back once it's dried. Anywhere you see that it's pooling too much, go in there and just zap it out. Anywhere that you missed, go and hit that with the wash and just make sure it's consistent. Give it a good once over and then let that thing dry. And there you have it. We got a beautifully shaded Rebel Mini for Star Wars Imperial Legion. And you can do this to all your minis at once and have them look sick. So, I highly, highly, highly recommend anytime you paint a mini, paint the base black. Otherwise, it's kind of distracting having weird colors on the base, especially if they're almost the same color as your mini. Uh, Deco Art Americana makes a pretty good black, honestly. You go to Hobby Lobby, pick this thing up for a dollar or two, and you almost never run out. I've had the same bottle for years. I use it for all my bases, and it cost me a buck. So there's no downside to it. This is a technique I started using pretty recently. I used to just grab a, as big a brush as I thought I could manage and just hope and pray that I didn't get any on the boots or the mini. Since I'm not going to be putting any terrain on the base of this mini, I really don't want to get any on the boots. So I grabbed a smaller brush just so that I can get the black on the base around those boots without having to worry too much about getting any black on the boots. I don't want to have to reshade these boots. We just went through all that work to get everything perfect. We just want it to work. So now we got just around the boots painted with that tiny brush. I switch over to a much bigger brush and just black out the whole base. That's going to save a ton of time as opposed to just going and blacking out the base with that tiny brush. You can use regular mini paint to black out the base. I just use that Americana style just because it's dirt cheap and it works. There you have it. Blacked out base, Rebel Trooper, shading is right where we want it. That wash hit everything we needed it to do. Don't forget to hit your mini with two, at least two coats, light coats of dull coat. Testers makes a really good dull coat. Uh, it stops your mini from getting scraped or scratched. That wash is a very fragile thing to just be sitting on there. If you start playing with it and moving it around, that wash is going to start scraping off. So if you hit it with some dull coat, it'll be nice and protected and you won't have to worry about that. I hope you guys like this video. I'm really happy to do it. I'm really happy to have a game that I'm excited to play again. So hopefully this helps you guys out, gives you some nice tips and tricks. If there's anything else you guys want to see, let me know. Shoot me a comment, shoot me a message. Throw some links up on the screen now. I got my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitch. I just started selling t-shirts as well. If you're looking for a way to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. I also take donations as well. Uh, links for everything that I have is in the bio. Thank you guys so much for watching.